Hey everybody, it's Jacob Young. It's January 30th, 2019. There's been hey another. It's Jacob Young. It's there has January. I have to 30th, mute this thing. One second. 2019. There's been hey another. It's Jacob Young. We mute this. January I have to 30th. mute. There we go. There's been another royal scandal in England. The biggest sporting event of the year is this Sunday. And I have a special guest from Broadway. This and more on tonight's Jacob Young Show. Thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone in the East and the Midwest is bundled up tonight for that polar vortex. It's a bad cold snap. There's some serious negative temperatures out there. What's your temperature tonight? I know it's cold here. And by the way, I have hit a milestone. I have over 2,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. So if you're new to the show and you're watching live, please write in to say hello. Weigh in on any of the topics tonight. Hard to believe. You believe it? it it's, 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 January is almost over. I don't know where the month has gone. But uh, I'm hoping uh, you're all still working on those New Year's resolutions. I know I'm doing a damn good job. I feel pretty good about where I'm at right now. Looks like we got some folks joining us right now. We'll go ahead and... Pop out the chat box so we can interact with everybody and say hello. Hope everybody's having a great night. Let's see, Stacy's here, Tavia's here, Angela. Thanks for joining. It's gonna be a fun evening. I got a great interview set up. Good friend Nicholas King, of course, um, is in. So that's cool. Get everything set up here. So anyway, I hit this milestone. It's fantastic. We're well on our way. I'm glad that the show has been is is affecting people and people are checking it out and watching it. Um, if you're new to the show, it's it, pretty much anything goes. You can you can chime in. You can ask me questions. I'll be answering questions throughout the show. I have some Jacob Young show scoop for everyone tonight because last week we were discussing uh, Prince Philip driving all by himself at the ripe old age of 97 without his seatbelt and he rolled over his Range Rover. I know that's not funny, but now this one did kind of make the news. I read about it, but you know, I saw it from, I read it from another British source. It tells me that just a few days after Prince Philip's accident, the queen herself, the queen was driving her Rolls Royce alone at the age of 95, you know, that's pretty normal, and was stopped for not wearing her seatbelt. I'm sure the officer who was arresting, or not arresting, <laughs> I'm sure the officer was mortified when he saw who was driving. Could you imagine? Your Majesty! Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can give the Queen a citation, though. You might, you might get beheaded. You might get quartered. I mean, they still quarter in England, don't they? No seatbelts. I mean, I wonder where the Queen was going. What, Starbucks? Guess the castle ran out of milk? I mean, where are they going without security guards and no seatbelts? Well, actually, I, had, I know why they don't wear seatbelts. It's because uh, they're supposed to be able to get out of the car fast if there was an accident or there's some assassin or, you know, some terrorist attack of some sort. So I can understand that. But, boy, it's sure taking, taking a big risk. What happens if they get T-boned, you know? I would hate for that to happen. Um, Blake Lee's on in the house. Ryan's in here. Thanks for joining, buddy. Now, now, back here in the U.S., we are gearing up for the biggest sports weekend of the year. Even bigger than my son's basketball game. In Atlanta this Sunday, Super Bowl 53. It's the Patriots versus the Rams. What do you think about that? Who do you think's going to win? Who's everybody rooting for? Kind of excited about the Rams. I feel like, you know, yeah, the Patriots, man, they're a great team. I'm just so Patriot out. You know, it's, uh, you know, how many times do we have to watch them in the Super Bowl? I'd love to see somebody else in there next year. But it's really refreshing to see the Rams. I know it means a lot to Los Angeles. Let me know what you're thinking. Hmm. Frank's in the house. What's up, brother? Looking forward to the show tonight. Thank you so much for joining, Frank. So, 
for some of us, the best part, you know, of the game is the halftime show. They seem to be getting bigger every year. And of course, this year didn't go without some controversy. There's been some backlash about performers playing. Not sure how you all feel about that. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on that. This year, we have Adam Levine and Maroon 5. It was just announced that they've canceled the traditional halftime show press conference. The NFL said in a statement, and I quote, as it is about music, the artists will let their show do the talking as they prepare to take the stage Sunday. What do you think about that? Are you excited to see Maroon 5 perform? I like halftime shows. Also, let me know if, you, if there was a previous halftime show that you've enjoyed over the, over the years. I mean, it is a lot of fun. I know uh, what we're going to do this week, we're going to meet up with some friends of ours. Um, they're going to have a, a Super Bowl party. And I love the Super Bowl parties because it's always, always great food, tailgate food. Of course, there's plenty of cervezas to go around. And uh, just, you know, everybody's passionate. It's a passionate time. Uh, oh, Stacy says, 33 here in Greenville, Mississippi, the temperature. Not too bad. It's just that freezing. Those people, like folks up in, you know, Minnesota and Chicago. And wow, some of those temperatures were just unbelievable today. Um, now there were some, there were some high profile specials on TV this, this past Sunday. And of course the SAG awards, we discussed that at the last episode were on TV. And at the same time on Fox was a live television version of the Broadway show rent. Did you tune into any, any one of those, either one of those rent holds a special place in my heart. I actually sang the song, one song glory from rent at Broadway cares, a Broadway cares benefit celebrating the 35th anniversary of my children. That night, there was a producer from Disney in the audience, and it led me to playing Lumiere in Broadway's Beauty and the Beast. Now, my guest tonight, Nicholas King, also began his Broadway career in Beauty and the Beast. We'll be meeting him in just a few minutes. So, as they say on TV, don't touch that dial. Now, critics said this Sunday's Screen Actors Guild Awards were classy, but a little dull. Many of the same actors who won awards at the Golden Globes and the Critics' Choice Awards received the same award from SAG. All the winners were very deserving, but do you think it starts to get to be too repetitive having so many award shows with all the same people winning? Acceptance speeches are surely getting very polished since the winners have so much practice. And by that time we get to, by the time we get to the Oscars, someone might actually get an award for the best Oscar speech. <laughs> The Oscars will be here before you know it, and we are having an online contest. I mentioned that last week as well. I'll be giving you the details as we get closer to the date, so you can email me your predictions, and the winner with the most correct guesses will be getting a really cool autograph prize. Now, I want to show you this week's interview with my friend Nicholas King. Now, I've got a couple things, actually, I want to show you. Um, one of them is his reel, because I want to kind of give you a little bit of backstory. It is he, he lives for Sinatra. He lives for Bobby Darin. He lives for all these, you know, these classic crooners, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, and, you know, he, he does a smash job. I mean, he's been on stage with uh, the telethons when he was 12 years old. Uh, he's done many Broadway shows. I'll let the interview speak for itself. But um, you're going to have to bear with me because I've got to click through a couple different things while I do this. Um, and... It'll just take one second, but uh, without further ado, I want to show you the reel. Bring this up first. This is really fun. I'm going to really show you part of it, get you uh, get a little overview of who Nicholas King is. Right, so. Interview here. Once I get you up there Where the air is so rarefied We are gonna glide So eyed Once I get you up there I'll be holding you so me near You might even hear All of the angels cheer Because we're together Weather-wise, it's such a lovely day 
But if you just say the words, we'll beat those birds down to Acapulco Bay. Hey, it's perfect for a flying honeymoon, I dare to say. So come on, fly with me. Come fly, let's fly. So that's a little, uh, a little bit about Nicholas King. You can see some of the, the great people he's been able to work with over the years. And, of course, you saw Jerry Lewis in there, one of my faves. Uh, and, of course, you saw him on the Jay Leno show. I mean, he was just a baby then. Unbelievable, this kid's talent. Um, and I still call him a kid because, you know, he is a young man. And, and he's still well on his way. He has an amazing cabaret show that he is doing right now. Um, and he's touring all over, but I'm gonna let the interview speak for itself. I can get it queued up here. And here's here's Nicholas King. Without further ado, go, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome my dear dear friend Nicholas King to the show. Uh, Nicholas and I we have been friends for many many years. Last time we saw each other, fortunately, we're not the best circumstances, but it was a celebration nonetheless. Yeah. And, of course, I'm talking about the late, great Jerry Lewis's celebration of life. And uh, Nicholas, you know, performed there. And he also performed at the Friars Club uh, for Jerry's celebration as well. Um, not to mention he was a regular every year on Jerry's Labor Day MDA telethon. It is so great to see you. Oh, it's great to see you too. And that studio it looks so cool. Oh, thanks. The person. You know, I try. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but uh, thank you for being on the show today. I can't wait to, you know, anybody who doesn't know Nicholas, uh, you should, because this guy is so talented. He's an entertainer across the board. I mean, he's a triple threat actor, singer, um, you know, bit of a dance too. I know, you, you know, you're up on stage when you're shaking your thing and, um, just, just, you know, amazing, amazing vocal abilities. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you. No, yeah. well, well, we call, we call it in the, on the resume moves. Well, moves. So I'm not a trained dancer, but he moves well. Yeah. I, I, you know, I always love it when I get an audition and it's like, um, you know, they need some, some dance experience, you know, right. don't have to be right. a professional, but some dance experience. I'm like, well, how much dance experience? I mean, I can, you know, I can jump jive and. That's it. Does cutting the rug at a wedding count? Because I can do that in a, in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, how you been, man? I'm doing really well, actually. I just uh, I just got back from being on the road a little bit. I just got back about two days ago, and I've got a couple weeks home now to sort of relax, chill, and sort of recharge before I head out again. Yeah. So I'm doing really well. Yeah, it's been, it's been a nice busy winter, which is nice. A nice excuse to escape the cold here in New York and to get into some uh, warmer places, get to make some good music and meet some nice people and see some really cool cities. Yeah, I mean, you're in demand, and that's what happens. You have to travel all over the place because people are dying to see you. Um, and first of all, I want to congratulate you on receiving the 2019 Legend Award from the Society for the Preservation of the Great American Songbook. Tell us about this award. Well, I, I'm really cool. So the Society for the, for the Preservation of the Great American Songbook is run by a wonderful man named Dick Robinson, sort of the founder of the uh, Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And uh, DJ, a wonderful man, and he and this wonderful society uh, sort of keep the Great American Songbook alive. So we call the Great American Songbook songs of Sinatra. So anything that you hear that's by Sinatra or Ella or any of these people, Tony Bennett, even Lady Gaga now has done some Great American Songbook. It's that genre of music, and it's this society that really keeps it going. They're very, very well connected to the radio stations, to a lot of performers. They put on a lot of events and try to keep this music really alive. And uh, they've been on the air. They have got a wonderful radio station called Legends 100.3 out of Palm Beach, Florida. And it's available up, up on the App Store. You can download it. I listen to it wherever I travel because it's such great, great music. I can just sorry, sorry, guys. Oh, I got to get I got to go ahead. I don't know what happened here. It jumped off the screen. There it is. We get it back up here. I'm going to push this forward a little bit here. That's right. That's and get back. Right. to. The, uh, tell us, I mean, what are some of your favorite memories about Beauty and the Beast? I mean, it was your first job, right? Was first Broadway, Broadway show? Broadway job. Yeah, it was my first Broadway show. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything more special than having your first Broadway experience be a Disney experience. I think you know, just working with Disney was really um, 
it's exciting as especially as an eight-year-old you know because it's so it's so wonderful and you get to see how all this stuff works you know as we used to call it the disney magic but you get to see it from behind the you know behind the scenes and to i think my favorite memory of doing that show would be being on stage um when everything was happening and hearing the gasps from the little girls and the little boys out in the audience going oh look mom look and that type of stuff and that was like even though i was one of them i mean i was eight you know but that to me was cool that i could be a part of fulfilling a visual fantasy for these little kids and for many adults too because i've heard from many grown-ups i'll call them that that was still the ranks in one of their favorite shows uh, of all time that they've ever seen on broadway so it truly was a special show and uh, getting to create that magic every night on stage was just so exciting yeah absolutely i mean i've heard that same thing Adults yeah. have come back over and over and over again. Now, why the show had to, you know, go off Broadway? We um, won't discuss it. We don't need to discuss that. But uh, you know, they made room but for a couple other back, shows. But if it ever comes back, I mean, you know, we already have our Lumiere cast with you, and uh, I think I could still go out for the role of Chip. I don't know. If yeah, I, 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 I think it'll work. Or the Pooh, one, one of the two. I can do one of the two. I mean, Lumiere will be much older now. <laughs> You know what? I'd even be a fork at this point. I don't, I don't care. I'd, just to be in that show again would be awesome. Yeah, it was. It was a fun time, man. I, I gotta say, it was. It was the best. And our our mutual friend Mark Rosano, uh, um, yeah. he's gonna like that we actually I mentioned his name. So <laughs> he's like he's writing a check. That, right that's now. me. That's me. Young, yeah. The memo for mentioning me on on, <laughs> on it. Well, following Beauty and the Beast on Broadway, of course, uh, you ended up getting a play, and you played opposite of Tom Selleck. In a thousand clowns. How did that yes. come about? So, because of Beauty and the Beast, I wound up going on the Tonight Show, and uh, Tom happened to be a guest on the Tonight Show, and uh, we met very, very briefly. And he was already in uh, talks for doing this revival of A Thousand Clowns, and he recommended me for the role. But because I was only nine years old at the time, um, I was too young for the part, and they didn't think I could handle it. You know, it was a very—it's a very big part. It's a three-act play with two less lines than Hamlet, and so uh, they were really not not pushing for me but nonetheless i auditioned for it six times and finally on the seventh callback uh they they said you know what that's it you're you're our you're our lead and uh we we went out we started in north carolina at duke university and took it on tour for a little bit and eventually wound up on broadway together oh, that is fantastic yeah. you know and see anybody who's watching out there that you know has that ambition and that dream to be an actor you know you know, uh, it, it's true. It, you are just a, a job away. You never know. I mean, if you keep if you keep auditioning and you go after it, you know, it's not something that's necessarily going to happen the first time you go out. And you right. know, a lot of people have a delusion of that when they first start auditioning and be, you know, I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be famous, right? right? But um, but yeah. So you know, that's testimony right there. Seven seven callbacks, but you're you know, but you stayed with it and you ended up getting the part. Well, and I, I kind of, I was convinced in my mind that I was going to get it. And I think that that helped. You know, I had a big determination because I loved the role. I loved the, um, I loved the, the writing. Herb Gardner was the playwright. And he wrote such a great show. And I just, I connected with it for some reason. And I just, I knew I was going to get it. And I just, I went out with it with, with that determination. And it, it did, it did pay off, you know. But I think that's like you're saying, persistence and finding the right material. You know, finding something that is right for you and that you can deliver you know really plays to your strengths as an actor um i think those are the those are the important things absolutely you know, knowing your casting roles. knowing your yeah. casting correct you know so many people go you know they think they can they play this or play that or even to say like somebody like you know dwayne johnson right you don't want to see dwayne johnson in a romantic you know story like a, a deep you know you want to yeah. see him maybe in a romantic comedy i want to see him save the world from a nuclear Bomb, you know, that's well, that happens during the romantic comedy. It always does. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you got to know your casting, and of course, your audience knows that too. They go, "I want to see him like this," and they can tell if it's authentic or not. For sure. Right. And lately, it's been, "I have to be bad guys." <laughs> that's right. You are. <laughs> All, crazy. Always playing the bad guy now. I don't. I'm, I'm okay I with that. I can believe that, Jacob. I don't know if I can believe that, but they, <laughs> but you do a great job of selling it, so you can almost fool us. Yeah, well, well, actually, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, so I, I know Carol Burnett, and you know, yeah. she was a huge fan of All My Children. And I'm not sure everyone knows that Carol co-wrote a Broadway play called Hollywood Arms, yeah. and you were in it. I Tell was. us about this play and some of your memories of the production and, of course, Carol. The 
Cow is just, she's everything that you see on TV. So you see a kind, a sweet, a caring, a, a down to earth, a modest woman. And that is exactly what she is off stage. And um, she, she could not be more supportive. And even today, I mean, we, you know, we still keep in touch. And if she ever comes out to the East Coast or if I ever go out to the West Coast, we try to get together or something. But she came to see me in A Thousand Clowns. She and Hal Prince, they came to one of our final performances. And I'll never forget getting the knock on my stage door. It was like out of a you know 1937 movie, you know, when you you open up the door and there's two legends standing there going, "We want to cast you in our show," <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" And uh, it was Hal and Cow, and they said, "Look, you know, we know that your show is closing, um, but we've we we're doing a new show. We'd like you to be in it. And what do you say? You want to be in it?" And I was like, "Uh, yeah." Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, working with them was just so exciting, and even staying in touch with her, you know, all these years after the show, you know, and just. Um, just being, you know, having her be a part of my support team is something that I, I cherish so much. Yeah. You know, I, I say this on a, I've said it on, what's that? I've got her book right there. There it is. I've got all the books over here. Yeah. I, well, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, have you read all of them? I have. Oh, yeah. wow. Yep. Surprise me every day. You're well read. I'm a big reader. I'm a big reader. <laughs> good. Yeah. That's a good thing. I wish I read more. I mean, I'm always reading scripts, you know, yeah. or, or writing a script or something, but. So I mean, get, delving into a book is has not, and plus I have three kids. It's like how how much peace well, and quiet can I? Well, I don't think you have time for that. But I mean, I like novels and stuff, and that's what I do have here. But also up here, I've got a lot of like um, industry biographies. So I've got uh, Uta Hagen. I see there. Uta Hagen. I've got Jerry Lewis, of course. Of yeah. Hey, Donna McKechnie, Carol Burnett, Don Rickles. Um, you know all that stuff. So oh, I I, I, like, I like the industry books too because it helps me sort of stay connected. Stay focused. Yeah. Do for, yeah. 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 Um, you know, so, so I mean, I I can vouch for going back to Carol Burnett. You know, I mean, because I've yeah. known her, she is absolutely. Yeah. Let's get off the book thing, man. Seriously. I know. I'm, well, I like books. Well, why don't you go read or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I can vouch for that because Carol, she truly is. She's just one of a kind. Um, and you don't you don't expect a, some from somebody who's had you know such an amazing career as her. I'm I know. I mean, I'm sure you've met some some people in Hollywood that you know, had amazing careers who are just not very nice people um, and pretty closed off. And she's definitely not that. She is so open and she's open. She's the antithesis of that. She's yeah. really the antithesis of, the antithesis of that. Yeah, antithesis I, I, of that. I understand. Yeah, you still haven't lost that list, I see. Well, I, I've almost got it here. We're close. We're very close. <laughs> We're close. Um, uh, so, yeah, so, uh, but, you know, so, you know, uh, Oh, this is a great one because I want people to know about this. You know, you have a, you had a, obviously got the Legend Award. Now, there's been a lot of legends, of course, that have inspired you over yeah. the years. Tell us about you know how you got to know the iconic Liza Minnelli. Oh, Liza. Well, I um, how to? It's such a long. I'll give you the very very abridged version. Um, my grandmother started to work with her vocally because my grandmother Angela Lucari is a wonderful vocal coach, wonderful singer, uh, had a wonderful career, <clears throat> and then decided to stay off the stage and stay behind the stage and help people vocally. And she got in touch with Liza and um, I started helping her with her comeback in 2002. Um, and they traveled Europe together. And my grandmother really got Liza back into vocal shape. And it just, it put me, you know, in, in, uh, in touch with her more, you know, more closely. And then of course she came to my show. She came to a thousand clowns. She came to my opening night. She was my surprise. And I had seen, you know, I'd met her a few times when I was really young. Um, going to some of her concerts, but then she asked me one day to open for her, like to be her opening act, and I was like, "Yes, exactly." Um, and so I did. Did it, did it go away? No, did we're good. We're up? you're back. Okay, you're back. Oopsie, oopsie. So <laughs> I um, I know. Uh, so I I went on the road with her, and then it was it was uh, yeah, it was fantastic. I'm sorry, Mike. I've got these. It's all right. It's all right. Airport. This is YouTube, and the audience is used to it, so don't worry. Yeah. I mean, my my shit freezes all the time, and you know everybody still stays tuned, and it's gonna okay, be just okay. fine. You're back. You're moving, and <laughs> so um anyway uh yeah so I I went on the road with her, and we started working together, and um it's uh from that point on she really became my my mentor. She really you know took me under her wing and helped me. She directed my first nightclub act when I was about eleven. Uh, we would sit for hours with like a notepad and a pen and, and song and some sheet music and come up with ideas and stuff. And she would help me brainstorm. And she she remained such a, a wonderful piece of my artistic uh, growth, if you want to call it, really helping me find my own voice and what I wanted to do as a singer and take my acting skills. Because she, she considers herself an actress first 
I mean, she's an EGOT. You know, she's an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony winner herself. So, you know, she she considers herself as an actress first. And so she helped me sort of take my acting chops and then put them into um, into the music aspect of it and to how to sell a song, you know, uh, from an acting point of view. And so she really, really guided me and helped me out greatly. And uh, I, I love her to death. I think she's just a truly a one of a kind. Uh, what a what an amazing story and what a great mentor to have in your life. You're you're yeah. blessed and very lucky, but the talent speaks for itself. And, you know, she obviously being the talent that she is recognized that in you. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I pinch myself still when I, when I think back to, you know, all those times that we spent. We don't work together much nowadays. She lives out on the West Coast. So I don't get a chance to see her as much as I would have, as much as I'd love to. Um, but uh, I cherish those memories of when she was living here in New York and I could just pop over and we'd sit, you know, at the edge of her bed with a, with a, with a basket of, of chicken wings and watch, you know, Turner Classic movies, you know, and stuff like those are some of my most cherished memories, really. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, now tell us um, what it was like to be a part of the telethon with Jerry. Um, do you have any great good Jerry stories from back then? And Oh, man, I got a billion of them. I mean, I know you've got a billion of them, too. We got <laughs> so many Jerry Lewis stories. Um, I think one of my favorite. Well, I have I have two. I'll tell two really, really quick ones. Uh, my favorite funny moment was when he came in to um, to the rehearsal during one of my sound checks, and it was it was already daunting enough because I was slated at one o'clock and Celine Dion was slated at one thirty, <laughs> and so she's already sitting in the audience watching this, and I'm like, stand, you know, freaking out that Celine Dion is twelve feet away from me, and um, and I'm doing my rehearsal, and Jerry comes storming in on his little motorized cart, and he gets up and he takes my my, my microphone, and I'm, of course I'm like. What did I do? <laughs> and he whipped. There was these little foam balls on the top of the on the microphones, and he didn't want them. Uh -huh. And apparently, he'd already told the sound people that he didn't want these little foam balls on the mics because it blocked the face. You know, it looked like this when you'd say. Uh -huh. So he rips it off, and he goes, "Let me ask you a question. Can you see my performer's face?" And of course, the sound director said, "Well, no." And he goes, "Listen, if I if my viewers wanted to to tune into a piece of orange fuzz, they would tune into Sesame Street." <laughs> <laughs> and he rips the thing off the mic, throws it on the ground, and he goes, you know, hands it back to me, and all three went. And it was that little moment that made me laugh because it reminded me that Jerry was interested in the specifics and the the tiny little things that most people wouldn't really pay attention to that added to the class and the clout of of the of the program. He wanted the best for the, for his program, and whether it was a song or a lighting cue or or a piece of orange foam on a microphone. He wanted to make sure that it was right, and that's a, that's a piece that I will always, always take uh, away from my times with him, is to never compromise, and don't settle for less when better is possible. Absolutely, absolutely. What a great story. When was the, yeah. what, how old were you when you first performed on the telethon? I was 12. 12. Gosh, that's unbelievable. Was 12 12. Out in Los Angeles. That was at CBS Studios. At TV uh, City. Yes, yep, and uh, that was, uh, yeah. Out in, out in L.A. at 4.30 in the morning. They put me on next, in between the plate spinner and the and the monkey juggler. And I was in between them singing, you know, nice and easy and life is just a bowl of cherries. It was a real trip. And I graduated every year to a better time slot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I mean, that, that is, that's amazing. And, and, you know, obviously, thank you for, you know, sharing your talent with the world during the telethon. I know how much it meant to Jerry. And It was um, such a thrill. You know, and it was a thrill to work with that organization because you got to see their, you got to see the effects uh, of where the money went, you know, and I would see families, I mean, I mean, you know, we would see families that would be in rough shape when they would enter the, the MDA family. And then the next year at the telethon, their health would be improved, better, it would yeah. be improved, they could be walking, they would be talking more clearly, they're just, it brought so much joy and so much help to these people and seeing it firsthand, how this organization has helped so many was just so much motivation to to be as big of a part of that group as possible yeah he changed so many lives uh, yeah. you know i mean without without him they would definitely without a doubt not be as far along with yeah. you know the the medicines and the treatments that they have it, it absolutely That's has awesome. changed changed the, the lives of so many and uh, yeah. god bless jerry well you and i well you and i stayed we, we were in, for the funeral we stayed up so late we were watching videos up on youtube and looking back on you know through Jerry's life and just man what a what an absolute visionary you know I mean he just he reinvented things you know he just completely rewrote the book he sure he? did he sure did yeah. he was one of the last the last of the great legends yeah. you know yeah. well um, let us move on a little bit here I, 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 you're currently touring 
in, uh, and have singing engagements around the country. We, we kind of mentioned that off camera. I want you to talk about that in a second. But tell us about the show and about your up and coming residency at the famous Birdland in New York City. Yes. So my show sort of varies based on, on the venue. So the shows that we've got in the, in the tour are sort of based on, you know, depending on what the venue does, whether it's a, an hour program or a 90-minute show. Or, but um, I'm, I'm working with a wonderful man named Charles Colello, who was one of the Four Seasons. He arranged all the music for the Four Seasons, and he's got a beautiful 14-piece orchestra. And me and another girl, Tony Sellers, we travel along with him, and we sort of go around the country here and there sporadically. Um, with his concert, and I get to sing all of his hits, like Sweet Caroline, My Eyes Adored You, uh, After the Love, and all these wonderful songs with the big band. But then for, for Birdland, um, I'm doing this, this wonderful show uh, called um, The Big City Songbook, and it's a tribute to New York City. And it's sort of uh, a residency. We're doing it once a month at, uh, at Birdland. So feel free to, if anyone's in, you know, if you're ever in town or if anyone's ever in town, try to, try to come and check us out. It's all the songs that you love about New York. Mm-hmm. And it just sort of celebrates the, the great city. It's really fun. <laughs> well, I was supposed to be out there uh, in a in like a week or so, two weeks, but um, it was for a, a new talk show on uh, Good Morning America has. Um, but it, they're doing an All My Children reunion. But unfortunately, I'm in the middle of shooting this film, and I'm not going to be able to be out there. But uh, guys, go see Nicholas. I mean, you will not be disappointed. He's so amazing. And of course, the venue is historical, so it's you know, it'd be, oh, you know, it's the coolest place in the world. It's mm-hmm. really, it's it's really, it's the best venue. And I will say, Jim Caruso uh, and uh, Johnny Valenti do such a great job at, at keeping that that room filled with people and such amazing entertainment. And it's one of those places that even when I'm not working there, I want to go yeah. and see who's performing there because they they bring such great talent uh, into that venue. And it's just, it's it's to me, it's my favorite venue in New York City. Yeah. Well, tell us about some of the cities and places you've been lately. Oh, man. The last two months has been super crazy. Uh, I was in Florida. Let's see, starting in December. Florida. I went from Florida to, to Germany. And from Germany to New York. New York to Trinidad. The island wow. of Trinidad. <laughs> because why not? And then um, from Trinidad back to New York to Boston and Rhode Island. And then to Seattle and Portland and the West Coast. And then back to Florida. And now I'm here. So I said the last two nights sleeping in my own bed has been but nothing but a joy. Yeah. I well, said I don't even want to get out of bed even. Get the um, rest, man. Get the rest while I you mean, can. But that's, you know. It's been great. It's been really awesome. And getting oh. to see so many people from everywhere and, and just, you know, sharing sharing the music with people from all over the place and seeing how it affects them and how much they like the music really makes me super happy. You know? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's a great show. And, you know, and if, you know, obviously you, I mean, you have some more dates that are coming up or are you going to be more doing the residency in New York? I do. No, I mean, we've got the residency once a month, but in between that, I'm playing uh, all over the place. I'm going back to Florida in a couple of weeks, and I'm playing with Charlie Colello again down there. Then I come back to New York, playing in New York a little bit. Um, and what's coming up in March? I think more Florida, uh, some New Jersey, some Rhode Island, some, you know, a little bit more on the, on the East Coast. For the, for Is there the, a, a place that the audience can go to see your tour dates? Yes, they can go to thenicholasking.com, T-H-E-N-I-C-O-L-A-S. The Nicholas King dot com. The Nicholas King dot com. Yeah, so make sure you if you if you're interested in <laughs> someone bought that domain, so I had to get the in front of it. So the Nicholas King. Oh, that happened to me too. Some guy some guy bought my domain, right? Yeah. And then I contacted yeah. him about buying it. I was willing to pay, you know, a, a pretty good amount. I wasn't gonna go crazy. This was several years ago. Yeah. He and, held it hostage, didn't he? And he goes he goes, Okay, you gotta give me fifteen thousand dollars and a tour of the set of the show I was doing at the time. <laughs> I was like, so what I'm going to pay you that? and then walk you around holding your hand around the set here. I said, absolutely not. No, thank you. I'll I'll figure out something else. Gosh, people are so bold, huh? Yeah, it was so it was so ridiculous. <laughs> so I obviously he's still probably holding on to that that dot com, oh, yeah. but he's waiting for his tour. Yeah, he's waiting for his tour, which is never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's so a lot. which composers and singers have influenced you the most in your life? Oh, my word. Well, obviously, of course, the people that I've worked with closely. I mean, Liza, of course, was such a huge influence uh, in me vocally and as a performer. You know, you watch some of her performances from the from uh, Radio City or from, um, you know, from the 80s and 90s. I mean, she's so dynamic. And I remember being really small watching. I said, I want to do that, you know, because every little movie that I mean, every little song that she's doing, 
is almost like a little movie. It's like an old, it's a little acting piece unto itself, and I, I really like that. But um, outside of the theatrics, uh, I really like, um, loved, I mean, grew up listening to Sammy Davis Jr. and, and Mel Torme. I mean, Mel Torme, to me, there was nobody better. I mean, this man could stat and 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 sing and croon and, and swing and take his time. I mean, some of those recordings that he's done live are just so dynamic and so wonderful. Um, Jamie Cullum is someone who I really admire uh, of today, a uh, young British chap who uh, I finally got the chance to meet, and I got to tell him that he's, you know, sort of my modern-day musical hero. Um, just, yeah, I mean, there's so many. I mean, you know, I mean, we're, we're shaped by everybody that we already listen to, but if I had to pick the, the top few, it definitely would be Liza and Sammy and, um, and Mel and, and uh, Jamie, for sure. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And you can tell, you can tell within, you know, your, your style and, you know, you definitely have been influenced by them. Uh, you, you know, you, you obviously we were just talking about this. You're quite the world traveler um, and we follow each other on Instagram. You're always, you know, somewhere in the world doing some something fun, making me jealous. Uh, uh, other than the, the place, I mean, like that you've been touring, what are some of your favorite places to perform? Oh man, favorite places to perform. I mean, is um, it like I mean, like Italy, for instance, or I love Italy. You know, I've never played in Italy. Oh, you but haven't? I want to play in Italy, because I have family in Italy, and I am Italian, and I speak Italian, and I would love to. I've actually never played in Italy. This is one of the problems. I was going to say Italy, but I said no. Wait, I've never actually played. Well, in you know, Italy. you know, we got you just got to walk into a place that has a piano and tell them to play a tune, and then you you'll you have know, a residency wherever you go. I really should. That's what I should do. I should grab a piano player and say, come with me. We're going, we're going on tour. We don't, they don't know it yet, but we're going. <laughs> no, we, I really should. And actually, I think it'd be, uh, I think it'd be great. Maybe I'll even try to grab you along. We'll try to do a little Oh, Italian man. Thing. I would love that. I would love that. So you hear that, Italian fans? We're coming for you. Allora, Italia. Volete vedere un, uh, un concerto con Rick e io? Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, Rick, that's how they know you. It was really funny. My friends in, uh, in Italy, I'm going to send this link to them uh, as well when they're done when we were hanging out uh, the last time and then i think i posted a picture of you on my story or something and i was in italy a couple weeks after and they were like yeah 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 it's nice to see you but you hung out with rick <laughs> that's all they wanted to know i said yeah they said oh my gosh they went nuts over it and yeah. they showed their mother and they showed their cousin they showed this one. you're very big over there the bold and the beautiful you know is, is such a big show or as they call it beautiful um uh, and uh yeah so there is a big there is a big following that's Makes yeah. all, all the more reason to get out there and do some performing. Jacob, I say we do. I'm checking Travelocity for tickets right now. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so if anything else you know that's coming up, and you know, other than you know some of the dates, you said you said you got New Jersey coming up. You got, got New Jersey, we Rhode got Island going out to Nebraska. So if anyone is out in the Midwest uh, that wants to come see me, I'll be out in Nebraska in September, and then I think uh, where else are we going to be? We just booked something far away. I don't know off the top of my head. It's it's escaping me. But you know, I, I update the uh, the website regularly, and we're still promoting the last album uh, on another note, which was done with that, of course, my musical director Mike Renzi, uh, which was such a thrill to make. Uh, it's just piano and vocal, and it's uh, one of my favorite accomplishments is is recording that record with Mike. So between promoting the record and just working all over the place, and you know, trying to, uh, I'm I'm also making the audition rounds again. I'm trying to get back and see what's uh, what's out there for. For the acting world, you know. Oh, pilot so, season is, is in full, getting ready to start. Pilot season, all the new shows. Yeah, um, I'm, you know, yeah. fortunately, I'm going to be working and be in LA for pilot season. You know, I mean, it's Good. it's funny because I've never really had a full pilot season in my life because I've always been under a contract and I feel right. really liberated right now. And I'm not under the thumb of a network and I can actually go out there and really, you know, give it, you know. Yeah, that old college try and get out there and try to get one of these shows. <laughs> That's it. Well, you know what, Jacob? I mean, it's it's always like a love fest whenever we hang out because I'm such a fan of yours and everything that that, that you do. So I think we ought to put together a, an act and try to pitch that somewhere. I think so. Let's do it, man. We ought, to, we ought to do it. It'd be it'd be fantastic. But no, I mean, you're you're so rounded in, in all that because not only are you a fantastic actor, but you're one heck of a musician oh. and writer. So it's it's really I'm I'm uh, I'm such a fan truly. Oh well, it's it, it's mutual, my friend, and thank you so much. And you know, just so everybody knows, uh, where can they find you on social media? They can they can follow me on the Instagram at uh, at it's Nicholas King, um, and then they can also follow me on Facebook and of course uh, up on the website thenicholasking.com. Yep, thenicholasking.com at Nicholas King. 
and Facebook. At, uh, at it's Nicholas King. Believe it or not. Oh, at, yeah. At, yeah. It's Nicholas King. At People it's Nicholas King. My name all the time. So it's <laughs> at it's Nicholas King. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you, you know, make sure you follow Nick and, um, you know, catch his shows if you get an opportunity. Thanks for being part of the show today. And to Thanks everyone watching, if, you know, uh, if you see that Nicholas is going to be in a town near you, go see him. As a performer, there are very few people these days that can do what Nick does on stage. You are first class, my friend. You're first class Thanks. showman. And now you're a legend. <laughs> Evidently, I'm a legend now. <laughs> I can quit. That's it. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Bye. Well, thank you I'll so cool. thank you so much, my buddy, and uh, and uh, we'll be you. we'll be catching up real soon. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you so much for having me. You're it's welcome. Fun. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my good friend, Nicholas King. The interview was a little bit longer because you know when friends get together, that sort of thing just happens, um, and. I want to go ahead and jump ahead to uh, our contest because I want to thank everybody for the positive feedback last week for the cooking segment. And we're going to be doing a lot more of those, so stay tuned. We had a soup recipe competition, and the winner still is the pea soup recipe from Kareen, Katie. Kareen, you're getting the signed copy of Jonathan Bennett's Burn Cookbook. It'll be signed by me as well. Unfortunately, on Friday night, I don't know if everybody saw this, but Jonathan was on Big Brother, the celebrity version of that, and he was kicked off. He was the first one to be kicked off, and I'm wondering if he cooked something from this cookbook and made all of his roommates uh, upset. <laughs> uh, but I hope you'll have fun with the cookbook. Please be sure to email me your address so I can send it out to you. For anyone who wants to email me or join in on any of our contests, for that matter, like our up-and-coming Oscar pool, my email address is the Jacob Young Show one at gmail.com. That's the Jacob Young Show one at gmail.com. Now I'm going to be heading back to Los Angeles um, this next week to get another movie, which I'm very excited about. This is my sixth movie, sixth movie since I've been off the Bold and the Beautiful, and I'm really excited to be starting uh, starting this this year off right in 2019. I also want to let you know that my Lifetime movies. Uh, if you haven't seen them, are rerunning on February 2nd. They're back to back. So it'll be When Vows Break and Killer Vacation with my All My Children co star, Alexa Havens, of course. It's going to be an evening with Jacob Young on Lifetime. So please check those out this Saturday, February 2nd. But come over here and see what else is being said. Make sure I'm up to date here. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll be back next week with new shows on location in Los Angeles. We also have more special guest interviews coming up in the next few weeks. One of the busiest casting directors in Hollywood, Paul Ruddy, not to be confused with Paul Rudd, Paul Ruddy, will be on the show. He's going to talk about casting for movies and TV. We'll have some tips for anyone who's itching to break into the show business. Also coming up, you'll meet Casey Garvin, who is one of the stars of the new Broadway musical King Kong. If any of you saw The Lion King and thought that was a, spe a spectacle, wait till you hear about King Kong. Casey will be talking about what goes on behind the scenes, brings the movie's most famous gorilla life on the Broadway stage. And one of my first guests last year was one of the stars of the Carol King musical Beautiful. Beautiful recently celebrated its fifth anniversary on Broadway, so I just want to wish them a happy birthday. Long live the music of Carol King. Thanks so much for joining me this week. Again, as always, if you heard your voice, or heard your voice, if you heard your name called on the show and you want to show off to your friends, you can always watch the Jacob Young Show anytime on demand on YouTube, of course. And uh, if there's any other, what can we do for Zach? Oh, <laughs> Tavia says, I was going to just field a few more questions. Um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean, we can, we can do a lot for Zach. Hey, also, I want to let everybody know, this is kind of cool, um, you know, when, you, when you've been doing acting your whole life, like myself, and, you know, you never really branched off doing another career, one thing I really do know is, is the business and, and acting, and I'm very excited to announce that I'm going to be at opening my own acting studio right here in Salt Lake City in Utah, on camera, TV, um, and also technique, of course. And it's I paired with one of the 
are just acting youth acting classes in New York City, bringing a little bit of New York to Salt Lake. Um, there's going to be all sorts of options, though. I, I can even, you know, if somebody wanted to take an acting lesson, we'll be doing everything from online to in-house to you name it. It's going to be a great time, and I'm very, very excited about it, as if I don't have enough on my plate. But I really enjoy teaching, and I really enjoy, you know, the little ones. And, I, you know, being a father, uh, it's just so much fun to be around that kind of energy and it's something I've always wanted to do. So it's, it's a dream come true. So I'm very excited about that. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Kristen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, anyway, as always, make sure you tune into the Jacob Young Show because even if you miss a little, you miss a lot. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Until next Wednesday, see you soon.